In this section, we're going to start talking about the Travis.eml file that we're going to put together to build all of our different images and then eventually deploy our application to our Kubernetes cluster. Now, unfortunately, all the Travis.yaml files we put together before were all kind of preparation for the one that we're going to put together now, because by a large margin, this is going to be the most complicated Travis.yaml file that we're going to put together. A lot of stuff is going to be going on inside of here, a lot of different configuration. So I've got a little flow diagram to give us an idea of what we're going to be doing inside of our config file to eventually deploy our application. So everything is going to start inside of our config file by installing a Google Cloud SDK. Remember, the entire purpose of Travis as we are using it is to not only test our code, but then to also deploy our application after our test runs successfully. And so we need to make sure that Travis has the ability to somehow reach out to our Kubernetes cluster and make changes to it, or essentially run a series of configuration files and apply them to our cluster. So to do so, we're going to install a Google Cloud SDK. This is a CLI that is going to allow us to essentially remotely interact with and configure our Kubernetes cluster, most notably by applying different config files. Now, unfortunately, this SDK does not come kind of pre-configured with Travis. In other words, we have to actually download and install the SDK every time that we run our Travis build. So after we install this thing, after we download and install it, we then have to configure the SDK with some information from our Google Cloud account. Essentially, we're going to authorize this CLI to make changes to our Google Cloud account and more specifically, the Kubernetes cluster that we just created. So that's kind of a little bit of preamble, some stuff that we're going to do at the very start of the script and get the CLI ready to then later on deploy our application towards the end of the process. After that, we're then going to start to go through with some steps that are very similar to what we had done previously on our other different Travis builds. So we're going to log into the Docker CLI. We're going to build the test version of the multi-client image, and we're going to use that thing to run our tests. Remember, we don't really care about the tests that are inside of that multi-client image. I just want you to have a good example of how you would run some tests inside of your application so that when you actually go and apply all this knowledge to your own personal project, you understand like, okay, at this phase right here, I'm going to run a command that's going to execute my tests. Again, we don't really care about the tests in our particular case. After that, if all the tests run successfully, we're going to run a script. So this will be a separate script outside of our Travis.yml file that's going to attempt to deploy the newest images. Inside that script, we're going to build all of our different images. So that's the multi-client, multi-server, and multi-worker. And then we're going to push each one off to Docker Hub. After that, we're then going to apply all the different config files inside of our K8s directory. So specifically, everything inside of here. We're just going to apply the entire directory. Now, the benefit to that is that if at some point in time, you and I decide, oh, hey, we need a new deployment or we need a new service or whatever it might be, all we have to do is add a new file to the K8s directory and then push our code up to GitHub. After Travis builds our code, it's then going to apply all the config files in that K8s folder. And so essentially our Kubernetes cluster is always going to be 100% in sync with our GitHub repository. Any changes that we make to our config files in the K8s directory are always going to be applied to our Kubernetes cluster in Google Cloud as soon as we push our code off to Travis. So overall, it's actually a pretty cool system. Now, after we apply those configs, we have to do one other little step. Remember, we had a lecture a while ago where I showed you how it was kind of a pain in the rear to get a deployment to use the latest version of an image. We saw that if we just tried to reapply a deployment config file, that did not somehow magically get the deployment to automatically go out to Docker Hub and check to see if a new version was available. And so as a workaround, I had showed you that very special command that very imperatively set the image version that a deployment was supposed to use. And that's how we're going to eventually get our deployments to make use of the new images that we built during this step right here. So in addition to applying all those configs, we're also going to make sure that we do some imperative command to update the versions of each image that each of our deployments is making use of. 
Okay, so a lot of knowledge here. Like I said, this is going to be a really intense Travis.yaml file. And there's even a couple steps during this process that I didn't actually write into this diagram just because it would make the diagram a little bit crazy. So a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff to talk about. So let's take a pause right here. In the next section, we're gonna create our config file and start by installing the Google Cloud SDK. So quick pause and I'll see you in just a minute.